everyone, welcome back to my channel. It's Dr. Rosie, your friendly family physician. Today I'll be talking about acne. More specifically, why do we get acne? What is it and how do we treat it? So how do we treat it with over-the-counter products, meaning things that don't need a prescription? If you fall into any of these categories, you know, someone who's suffering from acne, has suffered from acne, want to help someone with acne, and you'd like to know a bit more about how you can treat it without a prescription medication, well, you've come to the right video. I'm here to educate and empower you to live your best life as always. So please follow along so I can teach you more in today's video. All right, let's get right into it. I'll start off by saying as a family physician, someone who's already been a teenager and suffered from acne myself and has two, two teenage hmm, sisters, I know a little bit about acne. Not just that, within my practice, about 10 to 15% of my cases account are accounted for by dermatological conditions. A good chunk of those being acne. So I've had my fair share of experience with acne and acne treatment. It's also an area of interest of mine in dermatology. So that is why I'm well-placed and well-suited to educate you guys on this today. Let's start telling you what is acne and why does it happen? So acne in its of itself is basically whiteheads, blackheads, papules, which are red, bumpy, lesions we'll call them or pimples better known as and finally in the worst or more severe form is cysts and nodules which are kind of like painful bumps that people tend to get either on their face their chest their back and sometimes in other areas now for the purpose of today's video i'm speaking specifically about mild to moderate acne which is what the majority of the population suffers from however keep in mind if you're someone with more severe cystic recurrent acne non-responsive to these typical medications then you should consult with a healthcare provider so that they can a diagnose you properly make sure there's nothing underlying your acne and maybe needs treatment further and B can address it with proper prescription medication but for the purpose of today's video we're not talking about prescription medication we're talking about over-the-counter things that you can get yourself without a prescription so that's what acne is that's what it looks like now let's talk a bit about the pathophysiology for all the nerds in the back if you're not interested in this maybe fast forward one minute so we get right into the treatment options but for those who do want to learn about why acne happens, here are the four main components of acne. Number one, inflammation at the site of the follicle. So swelling, quite simply, at your follicle. Number two, excess seep excessive sebum production, which is basically an accumulation of oil, overproduction of oil that you don't really need. Number three, hyperkeratinization, which is what? Basically an accumulation of skin cells at the most superficial layer of your skin that don't wanna shed off. And as they accumulate and stick together and aggregate, they cause whiteheads and blackheads to appear. And then finally, the most maybe obvious would be an accumulation of P. acnes, or a bacteria basically, at that layer of your skin, accumulating, sitting there, and causing the whiteheads, the blackheads, and blah, blah, blah. That is the pathophysiology. So again, when we're talking about the treatments, they're gonna attack any one or multiple of these components. I will be talking about the treatments, but stay till the end because I'm also gonna kind of demystify how diet may or may not be implicated in control of your acne or in causing acne and et cetera, right? There's a lot of talk about diet, dairy and high glycemic index and things like that. So I will be clarifying that at the very end. Now, why do we get acne? Many reasons, mostly genetics, hormonal, and also underlying endocrinian problems, like I said, that should be diagnosed with a physician. Now, for the first line of treatment, I'm gonna talk about cleansing. So the first step in your skincare routine should really be cleaning off your face. If there's nothing else you do, it should be clean your face and put some SPF. But for you know, all intents and purposes, we're talking about acne, clean your face with something called an active ingredient. What is an active ingredient? It's something that's gonna go away and actually act actively to help reduce your acne. I'm talking specifically today about salicylic acid, a BHA or beta hydroxy acid. Salicylic acid is, well, an awesome chemical exfoliant. And what does it do? It kind of loosens up the skin cells so they unstick and easily shed off. It's a keratinolysis. It'll reduce your whiteheads, your blackheads, if used consistently. And it's found in a lot of over-the-counter cleansers, one by Neutrogena I've seen, CeraVe has one, Cetaphil. I use this one by La roche Jose religiously. It's awesome. It's a little bit foaming and they're quite you know, well tolerated by the skin. People who tend to be sensitive, well, I'm gonna give you other options for that as well. Keep in mind, I'm also gonna link in the description below a link to all these so you don't have to go and search for them and you'll know exactly where to find them if you're looking for these specific cleansers I'm discussing today and all the other treatments. Number two are retinoids or vitamin A derivatives. Now, retinoids are a little tricky because they're a big classification of medication and they go from over-the-counter retinol or retinaldehyde all the way to prescription medication like Accutane and Differin and things like that. In the States, actually, you think you get different over-the-counter, but not in Canada. So all to say, there are the milder forms that could be found in a lot of cosmetics pro products and prescriptions like Accutane that is needed for much more severe acne, like I mentioned before, nodular and cystic, but always seek, you know, 
counsel with a healthcare provider in order to determine whether you need that or not. But if you're responding to a mild or moderate treatment, retinols are really good. A lot of companies make them. I haven't used them all. I've used one by Vichy. I, again, will link these below, specifically the ones I've used. One by Paula's Choice, which is pretty good. And this by It Cosmetics. It comes in like a serum also, so it's pretty hydrating. And here's the other thing about retinols or retinoids. When used long term, not only does it help with acne, but it actually helps anti-aging properties. So against wrinkles, hyperpigmentation, and basically like slower the process of aging if you use it regularly with SPF. So that's just like a bonus of retinol. Next up, this ingredient is benzoyl peroxide. Okay, it comes in a 2.5 to 5%, even up to 10, but I recommend 2.5 to 5% gel format. It is also in some cleansers, by the way, if you want to use it that way, but I use it just as a topical active ingredient. And what it does, it's a antiseptic or antibacterial, which is awesome because it fights away the bacteria sitting there. And the benefit, unlike many antibiotics, it causes no resistance. So your body won't develop a resistance towards the bacteria growing if you use benzoyl peroxide regularly, of course. Again, it comes in a gel format. It also comes in a cleanser for your body. So if you're someone who suffers from acne over your body, where, wherever it may be, you may benefit from using that in a gel format as a cleanser. The other nice thing about benzoyl peroxide, a little hint, is that it can also help treat folliculitis and it can help treat ingrown hair. So if you're someone who suffers from those, using benzoyl peroxide could also be beneficial. Next up is azelaic acid or azelaic acid actually. And when prescribed, whenever I prescribe this, it's people with much more sensitive skin. I would prescribe it in a 20% cream and it can use AM and PM over all your skin. And um, yeah, but there are some that are not prescription. I know Paula's Choice has one at 10%, which has been proven to be pretty effective, again, for mild to moderate acne, but azelaic acid is another really good option and it works with a lot of other ingredients. Here's the thing, there's a lot of question about how many do I use of these active ingredients? Which can I use before, after? Is there any side effects I, I should be looking out for? And I discussed that in another video. So please check it out if you wanna know the specifics about each one of these ingredients, how to apply them, what to combine or what not to combine, et cetera, et cetera, et cetera. Now, finally, the next ingredient we're gonna be speaking about is a moisturizer. So ironically, a lot of people think, or not, I mean, counterintuitively, a lot of people think that using a moisturizer makes your skin much more oily and actually will worsen your acne. However, let me explain to you a bit how this is false when you treat your skin and dry it out let's say right because salicylic acid retinoids they tend to dry up your skin your body thinks i'm so dry okay so i'm gonna rear gear up my like oil production and boom go hammy we don't want that so if you put a nice moisturizer your body's like oh okay i'm nice and plump i don't need to make excess oil you get it so that's what you kind of why you want to put a moisturizer especially after using things like a retinoid and salicylic acid that being said, look for a moisturizer that says for oily skin. Why? They're typically water or gel based and don't cause a lot of occlusion and again, don't contribute to the greasy production on your skin. I will give you guys a couple of examples. So I know Avino makes a pretty good one. La Roche-Posay, I've used it a lot of times. It's totally around, it's pretty light and easy. Also really good in the summertime when you tend to maybe be a bit more on the oily side. CeraVe has a good one. Again, they all say for oily skin. So it's pretty easy to look out for that. Notice, guys, I did not mention oral contraceptives. I did not mention antibiotics. I did not mention spironolactone. I did not mention um, Accutane in terms of prescription and things that you can get because all these require A, a diagnosis and B, a prescription from a physician. So there's a lot more to acne treatment, but not discussed for mild to moderate acne and not discussed in today's video. Finally, like I promised you guys, what about diets? Hmm, diet, dairy, glycemia, what about it? Here's what the evidence shows. There is some evidence for low glycemic index diets to help with acne. What does that mean? If you find a food, you can Google up glycemic index. If it's a high glycemic index, meaning it'll spike your insulin, but we won't get into a diabetes discussion today, it'll be more likely to help contribute to, contribute to your acne, whereas a low glycemic index will not. As for dairy, here's the spiel. Very little evidence. I mean, not enough for me to advise my patients to cut out dairy from their diets, but Anecdotally, a lot of people have told me I cut dairy and it helped me clear up my skin. So that's totally okay if you know it works for you to cut your, your dairy. I'm just not gonna advise you to do it. With that in mind, if you do cut your dairy, the only important thing, you know, the main purpose of dairy is to get your calcium and your vitamin D. So as long as you're getting that elsewhere, I'm all good with you cutting your dairy from your diet. Cool. That's it guys, I hope you learned something from today's video. Please, if you did enjoy it, do like, subscribe to my channel, and uh, be here for a lot more empowerment and education. See you soon.